<clears throat> we got our uh, simple tack hookups, just three wires, uh, red wire to the power side of the coil, the pink wire to the trigger side of the coil, and the ground. That, that's pretty much it. And we were trying out this tack to see if it worked, and it does in fact work. Kind of worried about it because you know you get something really cheap and it came in a box of parts and some other stuff. But it, it does work, keep the lights work on it. This thing's really cold nature, I'll tell you that much. But anyway, the tack works good. Uh, like I said, it's three three simple uh, wires. Power wire, trigger wire, and a ground. These needs to work on the carburetor here. It's taking a really long time to warm up. It's still spent, so I'll have to do a idle drop on this and reset the air fuel screw. Just to be clear, uh, somebody asked me about rev limits on these things. Uh, rev limit is 5,800 on these which is pr pretty damn conservative. The reason they do a uh, rev limit isn't because it can't handle more. It, it can easily handle more than that. Uh, about 65, really, <clears throat> before you have to worry about uh, valve springs and lifters bleeding down anything over probably 65, 68. They will bleed down. You, you need to upgrade springs and Usually put uh, travel limiters and lifters with adjustable push rods. <clears throat> but on another note, uh, when it says 5,800 RPM, what that means is it, it starts, it cuts off 58. What you might notice on some bikes is your item. And I've had them before where you, you hop on a bike and, and you ride it and you notice that, man, it, it starts to shut off at or you can, you can feel it losing power at 40, 45, 4,600, 4,700, or 5,000. 5, so on a sports or you just feel it start losing power about 52 to 5,500 on some of them. It's, uh, ECM starts retarding the time before it hits the hard limiter. So you, you'll feel a little bit of loss there. And a lot of times guys won't even notice it. On a bone stock bike, they won't notice it much because they, they never stock bike just doesn't rev that freely. However, once you do an air cleaner kit and pipes, you'll find guys. You try to tell guys you need to get something with a higher rev limit. No, like, no, I, ne I never ride my bike that high. And then you do the pipes and the jet kit or whatever, or reprogram the ECM you know, modulate the fuel, whatever. And they pick the bike up, go out and ride it, and then they come back and tell you, man, I think I need to change the rev limiter on this thing. Because it revs so much more freer that it, it, it bangs off the rev limiter all the time. Uh, it's not really a big deal if you swap it out with whatever module. Now, in the old days, old Screaming Eagle module, a long time ago, they had one Screaming Eagle module, or actually two, one for Big Twin and one for Sportsters. And they both had a rev limiter of 8,000 RPM. And that's just what they had. You'd never want to rev one that high, but that's what, that's what they sold them out. Now, two, they were smart because they also sold an additional module that you could set the rev limiter on it. So you'd buy an 8,000 RPM Screaming Eagle module. You had to buy a separate separate box that was rev limiter that you could adjust the rev limiter on. Uh, truth is, it was more of a pain in the butt with the adjustable rev limiter because it seems like that thing was always going out of whack. And that was just, you know, Screaming Eagle stuff. Aftermarket, you've always had good stuff. Uh, you know, Dyna. Dyna stuff's always been good. Uh, Crane HI4. That stuff always seemed like it broke pretty easy. And, you know, not just one occasion, but for, for a while there, and I used to sell a lot of crane stuff. And then after a couple of years, you noticed that guys that had crane stuff, they'd come in and 
your bike could be running on one cylinder. You know, and you check it out, and you, you know, you might throw a test coil on there. Because it's going single fire, so you throw a test coil on there and try it. And it'd still be screwed up. So you'd end up replacing the module. And Crane was actually pretty good about it. They, they'd warranty them pretty, pretty easy. I had one guy that just swore by Crane stuff. And I kept telling him, man, you need to get rid of that thing. You need to upgrade to a diner or something else. So in the span of a year, we put four Crane HI-4s in there. That Crane paid for. So they, they were warrantying their stuff. But still, man, you don't want to be... 300 miles away from home and the thing starts rolling on one cylinder and you know you're, you're kind of screwed so i just kind of shy away from the crane stuff never had a problem with dinas doing anything like that and i know i'm, I'm shining on the dinas here but you know I, I like dinas stuff because i've never had a problem with them i think in 35 years i had to replace one dyna s That was that was in a shovel head, uh, and they they you know Dyna took care of it. They did. They they stood behind their products. But uh, if you got your bike and you, you find that you're, you know, you've done air cleaner and pipes to it, and it starts losing power at you know fifty two, fifty three hundred, whatever, that uh, you might want to think about changing your ignition module. Now the reason they're so low on uh, on the uh, rev limit here is for EPA reasons. They have to run these things through a, basically a sound tunnel at half rev limit to pass noise emissions. So when they ride through there, they found, you know what? If it's making too much noise at 6,000 RPM, we can just cut the rev limiter back a lot easier than doing anything else and trying to get rid of noise. So they'd, they'd knock the rev limiter down to, you know, 5,800 or in big twins, 5,200 or whatever. And it'd do the trick. Problem is, you know, these things, like I said, that they'll, they'll live quite well higher than, higher than a uh, stock rev limit. But anyway, that's enough of that. Just, uh, want to tell everybody that like I said if, if you're if you're banging off or if you're losing power it's usually not your jetting that's off you know you're, you're revving the hell out of it and you hit you know 5,000 on a sports tree you hit 5,000 5,300 5,400 somewhere in there and it feels like it's kind of starting to shudder a little bit it's usually the rev limiter doing that not the jetting I've seen guys go through jetting and they're trying to jet it, jet it, and jet it and end up having an entirely too big main jet or entirely too small main jet. And the whole time it's been the ignition module, rev limiter, killing the power. Anyway, you guys have a great day and uh, take care.